Greetings, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. God bless you, God bless you. And thank you for joining the Authentic Word on OCN. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We have every reason to praise him. We have every reason to glorify him. We have every reason to exalt him and lift him up. We've got so many reasons to do that. Oh, it just should come automatically without you having to even think about it. Oh, yes, he's so good. He's so good, he's so wonderful. And so that should be one of the easiest things in the world for us to do, is to give glory and praise to Jesus, his wonderful name. He is so good, he is so wonderful, he's amazing, he blows our minds. Wow, and all that he has already paid for us to have, wow, him and the Father, what a mighty God we serve, what a plan that they have for our lives, and still have, and, and adding more and more into the kingdom of God, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm so excited for you, what God has for us today on his program, The Authentic Word. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to pray for you, and we're going to jump right into the word. I tell you that time goes by so quickly, so fast. I don't even get to do a fourth of what God gives me at times. So let me just pray for you right now. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Oh, just thank you, Lord. I just thank you for another privilege and opportunity to minister to people all around the world on this wonderful network that you continue to bless more and more and more. Hallelujah. I just thank you, Lord God, that I'm one of many that get to do this. And so we just ask you to continue to bless it and cause it to prosper and have good success and that the people who are watching, that they are receiving what they need to eat on your spiritual food. Oh, it's, it's from everlasting to everlasting. It never fails us. It, it, it's never uh, a stale or old. It's always new. It's always prosperous. It's always good. It always strengthens us. It builds us up, and it causes us to be more like you. And so thank you, Holy Spirit, for your spirit to make us become more like you. Thank you, Father. Your plan is wonderful. It's amazing. It's mind-blowing. And so whatever you have for us today, you have your way. All you and none of me, in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you again. And, and let's look into this word once again. And we're going to go to the book of First John. 1 John and chapter 2. And in 1 John chapter 2, you know, like I said, John is the one that really loves to speak on uh, the father and son relationship. And not only that, but um, about love, because that father and son relationship is based on love, just like our relationship with him is based on love. And the father's love is is uh, amazing, <laughs> to say the least, or to say the most, maybe I should say. <laughs> Hallelujah. That love is good, good, good. And so uh, the father and the son, and so this is John talking about this, and he's saying how we have the unction. And uh, Jesus is speaking uh, of, of his father. And look at verse, uh, let's look at verse, hmm, okay, let's look at verse 20. But you have an unction from the Holy One. Oh, wow, we got an unction from the Holy One. What is that unction? That unction is the Holy Spirit. That unction is to speak in the spirit. That's the unction of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And who gives us that? Jesus gives us that. It came from the Father, and the Father said, Give that to my children, my sons and daughters of God. That unction 
to speak in different languages without having to go to school and learn those languages. And whenever you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you pray in the Spirit, you are praying things that really need to be prayed. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, but you have that unction, wow, from the Holy One. See, it came from the Holy One. And you know all things. That's really how you know all things. Why? Because that unction, the Holy Spirit, is on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit knows everything. Just like the Son and just like the Father. And so this is what he says. And I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. You know the truth. The truth lives on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And so you know the truth, and, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. And now look at verse 22. Ooh, wait. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus, who is the Christ? What? Now, this is what he said. This is what John said. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? So I pray you are not one who denies that Jesus is the anointed one, that he is the Christ, the anointed one, the anointed one who came and paid the price for us to be just like him, to get us back to our Father, because our relationship with our Father was cut off due to the decision. The decision made the difference. What you decide to do makes the difference. And so that decision cut us off from our relationship with our Father. Our Father, which is in heaven, that we pray to, that we covered the last time about when Jesus taught us, he said to pray to the Father. Because the Father is the one that's listening to the prayers. He's, he also is. But he wants you to address him about it so that he can do what it is that you desire, what your need is, and he know that already in advance. And so he said, if you deny that Jesus is the Christ, wow, you are a liar. So you don't want to be a liar. You want to be of the truth because you know the truth and the truth lives in you. So you can change that. You don't have to remain a liar. You speak the truth and you accept the truth and you act on the truth. The truth is what makes us free. The truth makes you free. Who is the truth? The truth is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. So he says, when you try to deny Jesus, who he is, that he's the Christ, that's what it makes you. So he is an antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Because, see, when you deny Jesus, you're also denying the Father. And so you can't not separate the two of them. They are one. The Father and the Son are one. And Jesus said that many times in the scriptures. And he said, he that is antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Look at verse 23. Whosoever denies the Son, the same have not the Father. Don't you know you don't even have the Father? You call yourself praying to the Father and you haven't, uh, accepted Jesus, you've denied Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. You deny the Son of the living God, you're an antichrist. Oh, wow. And where did he say they were going to go? Whoa. So he said, whosoever deny the Son, the same have not the Father. You do not have the Father. That is not your Father. The Father in heaven is not your father. 
So once you receive Jesus, you automatically receive the Father. You get the Father also. Hallelujah. That is powerful. But he that has acknowledged the Son, what? Has the Father also. Don't you know you automatically have the Father when you acknowledge the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. And so we read that further in this same book in 1 John and in chapters uh, 3 and 4 and 5, all of the chapters in this book of 1 John tells you that, that the Father is the one that sent Jesus to be the Savior of the world, to come and to save us and get us back so that we could be a whole family again because we lost that identity. We lost the spirit of God that was living in Adam and Eve when they made that decision to change their minds and no longer wanted God, the Father, to walk with them. My, 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 do you realize it was the Father that was with the Israelites when he had Moses take them out of Egypt to be the deliverer for the people. They had been in that nation for over 400 years, generations and generations. They didn't start out being slaves. They became slaves over a period of hundreds of years. So when the father said, I want my children back, what did he do? He established a people, he, which he called his own people. And so we are his people, those who accept Jesus and receive Jesus and get born again. So it matters not whether you're from Israel, whether you're from Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, whether you're from the United States, whether you're from Egypt, Africa, India, wherever you're from, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, as the Son of God, the Father says you automatically got him too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he said, pray to our Father which is in heaven. Your Father lives in heaven. So any kid who says they don't have a father, they have a father. Get born again and you get your spiritual father back and he'll give you a natural father again. He will give you another father on the earth too, as well, because many fathers ha couldn't be the father that they needed to be for their children. Fathers are absent a lot in many families and homes. And so what does the father in heaven do? He'll give you another father. Wow, but he is your father. You can trust him. You can rely on him. You can believe in him. Hallelujah. Through his son, Jesus. You must go through Jesus to get, to be able to have a relationship with our heavenly father. That is so glorious. That is so wonderful how we get everything back. And see, because that relationship got destroyed, and they separated themselves from the Father in heaven when they decided to eat off that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the Lord wanted them. He wanted them back. That hurt him so much. Hashem was very much hurt, and he gave them free will choice. He knew it was a possibility that they may choose to do that. But... That is not what he wanted for them. He wanted them to continue to have dominion over everything he made and created for their enjoyment, for their pleasure. And the food that they were eating off the trees and all of the, uh, 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 all the beauty and all, the, all of that belonged to Adam and Eve, everything. The rulership and the dominion of all that which God put on the earth for man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so God was hurt. He was disappointed 
And he says, no, but there's consequences, my son. Adam, my son, is consequences. And you know, God says, look, you're still my son, even though you're doing wrong, even though you're, you have did many things that is devastating and destructive, and you've had wars and murders and killings and all kinds of abuse and not treating one another right, devastations, earthquakes. That's why the earth is in such a turmoil, a mode, and floods and famines and pestilence and diseases and the pandemic, all the stuff. Why? Because of the decisions that man make, because man has made very bad decisions. And yes, there are times when man has made good decisions. So make good decisions. Make decisions that will please the Father. And Jesus will give you the discipline. He will give you the strength. He will give you the determination to trust in his word because he's your strength. He's your truth. He's your healer. He is your deliverer. He will make a way for you to escape all kinds of devastation and destruction and evil acts of men and women and people all over the world. So come back to the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, because without Jesus, we have nothing. We have nothing. We, we go straight to hell when we die if we don't repent and come back to Jesus, to the Lord, our Savior, our owner. See, because the Lord was given all of us to him by the Father. We are the Father's children. And just as Jesus came in the womb of Mary, hallelujah, praise God. See, he was the son of Mary and Joseph. So he had a physical father on the earth too. Hallelujah. And so we get both. Because what will God do? God will put you in a family where the mother and the father is saved already and you have your physical father on the earth and then you have your spiritual father in the heavens. Wow. So the father loves it when we please him. He says, because when you do that, I will give you the desires of your heart. Do you not know that the Father loves to give us what we want? He's so generous. He's so kind. Let me show you this in the Word. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 37. Psalms 37, people. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. Psalms 37, and let's look at verse 4. He said, delight yourself in also in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is who King David's writing about when he says that. Delight yourself in the Lord, and what will happen? Come on now. When he said, love me with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, he said, wow, you do that? He said, there's nothing that I will withhold from you. I will give you whatever you desire. So remember I was talking about before how not just your need, but your desires. Wow. And so he said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. See, because your heart is going to desire good things. You, why? Because you've got the heart of Jesus in you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the heart of Jesus, he said, you delight yourself in him, and he'll give you that desire of your heart. You desire a child, you desire a husband, you desire a wife, you desire a friend, you, you desire a new job, you desire a new house, you desire a new car. Whatever it is that you're desiring, God said, when you put him first, when you 
Hey, don't ignore him. When you acknowledge him, he said, and you acknowledge my son first, and you automatically get me with that. Oh, we, that is so powerful. That's so wonderful. So the father and the son, they cannot be disconnected. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. So look at verse 14 in chapter 4 of First John. And verse 14, and we, we have seen and what else? Do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And that's in the first chapter of John 2. He came this, for that very purpose, to save us, to get us back. And so we could be just like him. And that's why we're called sons of God. We are the temples of God. We are sons of God. Hallelujah. What awesomeness is that? You have the Holy One living on the inside of you. Praise the Lord. And look at verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in them. Don't you know the Father is living inside of you? Yeah. Ooh, we don't tell me you can do all things through the anointed one. Why? Because he lives there. He lives on inside of you. There's nothing that you would not be able to do. And so he said, you can do all things through Christ who will strengthen you, who will give you the strength, who will give you the ability, who will give you the know-how and the where-how. We don't have no excuses. We can be just like Jesus, the Son of God. We're sons of God, sons and daughters of God, and God dwells in him and he in God. Do you not know God the Father live in you, and you live in God the Father. And when he looks in his hands, he see your face. And he will come and visit you face to face, too. He has done that with me. The Father and the Son was watching. Praise God, the Son was watching when the Father came to visit me. Oh, my word, that I don't even know how to describe that. But that was such an amazing experience. There was more than an experience, but it, the, the, ooh, wow. The power of God is something else. His love, I saw love just coming out of his eyes as he was sitting and talking with me. Oh, my. Praise the Lord. So God dwelleth in you. And he in, in, in God, he in God, God in you. And we have known and believed that, that the love, love God has to us. Wow. Believe the love. You got love living on inside of you. And with love, you have the anointing, you have faith, you have the power to change, you have the the power to become all that God created you to become. Wow, praise the Lord. So, and let's finish that verse 16. For God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. There it is. He broke it down so plain and simple. So the father and the son relationship, you see how important and connected you are to them? Hallelujah, glory to God. And so on that note, I hate to stop, but I'm going to have to. But I am just so honored and privileged to have ministered that powerful truth to you today about how you are one with the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. And I'll see you next time on The Authentic Word. God bless you, and shalom, shalom.